The National Highway Traffic Safety Agency is investigating Tesla's autopilot for something called phantom braking. If you look in our comment section, you'll discover that it's either a nothing burger blown out of all proportion by Tesla haters, or a disaster of epic proportions that's been hidden by evildoers at Tesla who would have us all enthralled to the lizards. But Tesla's autopilot is by no means the only driver assistance system to suffer from phantom braking. So what is phantom braking? Why does it happen? And does it really matter? Let's dig in. But first, the bell was shining in the night, the notifications under simple stars, and as you subscribe under the lights, I knew my heart would be at stake. Am I just another presenter? Cause I never can resist it. Oh, please, just click your gentle t- <clears throat> Sorry, no, maybe not. Transport of Earth's proprietary blend of fresh as a daisy news, reviews and context is supported by viewers like you and by me wrecking song lyrics. So if you'd like me to stop, which is reasonable, or continue, hang out till the end of the video when I'll tell you how you can support the channel. Computer vision is weird. I mean, to us, presumably to Lieutenant Commander Data, computer vision seems perfectly normal. And I guess when Lambda gets computer vision, they'll just be like, well, this is how I see. But to those of us humans with 2020-ish vision, the way we perceive the world is very, very different to the way that computers perceive it. And therein lies a problem, because we're now using computers to do jobs that have traditionally been done by humans, and we're relying on computers to use the same elements of a thing to categorize it as a specific object, just the same as we do. Or at least, we need computers to identify objects using a constellation of things about that object that allow it to, at the very least, always recognize them when a human would. And sometimes those systems occupy an uncanny valley of operation. It's kind of creepy how close to a human they seem to be performing, only then rather suddenly they don't quite meet that expectation and things get super uncomfortable. Which leads us to things like phantom braking. Phantom braking is, for those of you who've not encountered it, when a car operating under some level of driver assistance and using some form of environmental condition detection, which could be a front facing radar, lidar, or camera, or some combination of those things, identifies something in the surrounding environment that it perceives as needing the vehicle to brake for. So to put it simply, it thinks it sees something in the path of travel, which it needs to stop for. That thing that it thinks it sees doesn't exist, or at least doesn't need stopping for. Or maybe computer vision systems are all secretly afflicted by some form of pareidolia that we're just not smart enough to see. And depending on the implementation and what the vehicle thinks is in front of it, it may simply slough a bit of speed, gently apply the brakes, or it can suddenly and unexpectedly perform either a near or complete emergency stop in the middle of the road for no apparent reason. I've been in vehicles running a wide variety of driver assistance systems which have done some pretty bizarre things. In our Kia, with its built-in system, there are some trash cans near us that if positioned just right, it will miscategorize and slow down for, behaving as though there are objects in the path of travel, which they aren't. Thankfully, it's always been a fairly gradual slowdown. When we were driving a Ford Mach-E last year, it would sometimes misidentify truck speed limit signs and suddenly drop its speed from the 70 miles an hour everyone else was traveling at to 55, because the signs told it to. Or rather, it could see the numbers, and it hadn't the foggiest idea about what the words were underneath. And on the same trip, Winter's husband's Tesla Model 3 that we also had along tried to perform a near-emergency stop for a vehicle in an adjacent lane. A similar thing occurred for Nikki in the BMW i4 that we were reviewing when the car decided someone who was coming to a full and complete stop at an angled merge was instead a clear and present danger to the near-side quarter panel. It wasn't. If you aren't prepared for or unaware of the situations where this can arise, phantom braking can quickly shift from being a minor inconvenience to being the cause of an accident. Which is probably the same reason why a 2020 study found that rear-end collisions made up a greater than expected percentage of autonomous vehicle accidents. Humans are, for the most part, very bad at keeping a safe distance from the vehicle in front and also expect the vehicle in front to behave the way we'd expect it to with a human driving it. Driver assistance systems don't always do that, and the consequences of mixing the two on the road can be unfortunate. 
Of course, in a world where it was just robotic systems, we'd not have a problem, but until we're all living in a dystopian future where driving is strictly prohibited unless you're that one rogue agent who just thawed out from a cryogenic sleep, well, we have to coexist with the robots. So why do driver assistance systems suffer from phantom braking? Well, to put it super simply, autonomous functions are hard to get right. Planes have had autopilot functions for a hell of a lot longer than cars, contend with a simpler environment in many regards, have far more carefully trained operators and autopilot systems, which incidentally are closely supervised by pilots, and are still not generally used in turbulence or really at any point when things have started to get kinda tricky. In road-going vehicles where such systems are relatively young, the challenge is exponentially higher. Computers are expected not merely to take outside data and keep the object at the right height, travelling at roughly the right speed and following a set course with fixed waypoints up in the air Junior Birdman style. Instead, they have to identify a road surface which may or may not have lines on it that may or may not be in the right place and may or may not have random objects deposited on it and which contains a wide variety of drivers with varying levels of skill, ability and sobriety. Surrounding that road is the bountiful abundance of all the things that humans have created from the other cars to the aforementioned trash cans to, say, drain covers to foil-wrapped crisp packets which incidentally can be radio-opaque if they're the metalised ones. Oh, and increasingly we're demanding that cars also identify from the mess of objects around the road things like traffic lights and street signs. Oh, and we should also throw in that we don't want them to hit cyclists or pedestrians or children or animals too. We did a whole video about how autonomous systems see the world back when we went to go and see comma.ai, but of the approaches by far the most common one used at present is teaching computers in cars about all the things that they see around them that we think they should care about, then trying to get them to reliably identify them. And I'm just going to take a momentary tangent here to point out that there's a whole field of study that looks at adversarial attacks on these systems and it really demonstrates how what vehicles are identifying may not be what you're expecting. I mean the video on the left here shows a stop sign with some stickers on but the system in the car identifies it as a 45 mile per hour limit sign until far too late to actually stop. The reason for taking you on that brief tangent is to really reinforce that what computers are identifying as being the things that make a stop sign a stop sign aren't necessarily the same things that you and I identify as making a stop sign a stop sign. Like I said, this stuff is hard. And because what the system and what you interpret in any given scene can be very different, the challenge of getting drivers to be better able to manage its behaviour is a very real one. I mean, Boeing 737 MAX anyone? While the plane had some issues because of its technology, the crashes were largely because of how the humans interacted with and reacted to the technology and what they thought it was doing. But if all vehicles with autonomous and semi-autonomous systems seem to do this, then why are Tesla in particular being picked on? I'm not sure. Tesla publicly has a somewhat adversarial relationship with NHTSA, which I doubt helps. And Elon can be quite outspoken at times, to put it politely. But we've also seen Tesla recently file to reintroduce radar systems to its cars, and so it's possible that it's found the monomodal assessment of the world using just a camera-based system isn't quite cutting it. Humans use all of our senses to drive. We integrate data about how the road feels, the temperature, noises from our surroundings. We integrate all of that with our proprio perception as well as using vision when we drive. Limiting cars to just the one system does seem, well, limiting. And we at the channel have certainly seen an uptick in complaints about phantom braking with Teslas since it switched to a vision-only system. That said, the vision-only system has so far seemed to be much better at detecting distant stationary objects than radar-based systems seem to be. So to a degree, it's which problem do you want to solve? Running into an object at speed can be very bad, and so can suddenly performing an emergency stop on the freeway. What I think we can all hope is that the NHTSA investigation at least clarifies what expectations are regarding these systems, who's responsible for them when they're in use, and maybe what statistics we need to collect to be able to understand what needs fixing to get us all to a safer future. Because all that stuff will help us with getting these systems to a point where they're safer for everyone. That's it for today, thank you for watching, and we'll be back soon with more. 
If you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to leave your thoughts below or in our free to join Discord chat room. There's a link in the video description. If you want a more generalized news roundup in the world of cleaner, greener, safer and smarter vehicles, check out our news roundup show every weekend. And don't forget we produce videos every single day on this network for you to enjoy, ranging from deep dives and features to tutorials, unboxings and reviews. If you haven't already, make sure you've subscribed to this channel and our other channel, Transport Evolve Take 2, and make sure to give the bell a gentle ring to make sure you're told when our next video goes live. Thanks on behalf of the entire TE crew, go out to the folks on my right for being our $15 to $49 a month supporters. Special thanks to our $50 a month patrons, Chris Maxwell, Pedro Muro Pinheiro, Patrick Boyarski, Bennett Elder, Brian Newton, David Kitchen, Michael Goad, Ricky Leong, Andrew Martin, Guido Drahota, Brophy Wolf, Tezza in the Gong, Gordon Seed, Stephen O'Donoghue, Kyle Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Raging Fellows, Jim Burness, Chris Ascenta, Chris and Michael Johnson, Peter Dillinger, and Denny Hyde. And our deepest gratitude to our $100 a month Patreon supporters, Anonymous Freak, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, Joe Bresney, Reed R, JP Fagerback, Russ, Will Graylin, Matthew Drobnak, Rory Litwin, John Lyons, Andrew Glenn, Paul Conway, Laura Reynolds, Ellery Hensley, and of course, Ian. Want to be part of the amazing list? You can join Patreon at the link below. Hit the join button below to support us on YouTube or show us your support through Bitcoin, Kofi, or our cool swag store. And if you're unable to support us financially, just know that watching the video and sharing it really makes a difference to our ad revenue and keeping the algorithm well fed and safely ensconced in its evil little cave. Thanks for joining me, and as always, keep evolving!